good morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday. So, today's show is brought to you by Ralph Waldo Emerson, who says, Every artist was once an amateur. Every artist was once an amateur. All right. We've got a couple of things to work on today. We're going to be working on the commission that we had done before with the Ghostbusters shuttlecraft. So we've got to do that kind of work on that, kind of fix up the shuttlecraft a little bit here. Um, I've got a couple of instructions that I want to put on here to kind of make it work. Um, so we've got to kind of do that. But first, as you so well know, for all of you who are joining me at home, uh, it is time to head over to the May line and do our morning exercises. So let's go on ahead and head over to the main line and we can see that the camera fell a couple of days ago and you can tell that that's the case because it's not even remotely lined up to anything anymore. I'm not even really sure what it's doing here, but we'll figure it out, I'm sure. It doesn't need to be quite so far back. I think the pin fell out of down there, which is what I think really occurred. Um, there's a, there once was a pin back there, which held and supported this. So we will pull this down a little bit more. We're actually not at the moment working with uh, our dear friend uh, Pepper. Who does watercolors with us? So I'm gonna go on ahead and take my L square here and do this and this. So we're just using a normal metal L square. I love my L square. It's it's a solid piece of metal. It's a very solid piece of metal. Okay. We'll take my French curve and we'll do a French curve right here. And we'll do another French curve right there. We need to do our dot the dots so that we know that one, two, three points, and one, two, three points to the other side. Okay, we're just gonna take our normal 0 0.4 millimeter uh, pen here. This is just a normal fine liner. Uh, like I say, uh, I prefer that you guys use the felt tip pens and not, in fact, use um, ball points. Again, lift your elbow from the table so you want your elbow off the, the table so it's not resting. You don't want to be drawing like this. We want to be drawing from the shoulder. Put your point down and off we go. One, two, And four. Next line, same thing. One, two, three, and four. We'll head up here to these long lines. One, two, gets me, or 
we're gonna do these 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 guys right here and you want to pull as much as possible One of the reasons we don't want to actually put our hand down any more than we absolutely have to is, though it does stabilize, if you were here, we'd drag our hand through this line right here, which time we would, we'd smear it if we didn't have fast drying inks. Again, put your pen here, then look to your destination. Put your pen here and look to your destination. Put your pen here and look to your destination. All right, we're running rapidly out of October, aren't we? It is the 28th. We'll put that over here. And we'll call this a day. Hi, day. Welcome to my drawing minifan. You will head back over here where things are a little strange, but not that strange. And we'll work back in. All right. So, shout out goes to Brian, who has been part of our show for a while. He's incapacitated at the moment and subject to... Uh, subject to the the horrible things that are happening in our pandemic world so our thoughts go out to him hopefully he will make it and I actually I'm pretty sure he will make it um, but I'm hoping for no long-term effects or anything bad happening to him good luck out there Brian stay with me man stay with me I need you back here to help me watercolor okay Hey Brent, how you doing, man? Good to see you. Um, so we're gonna head over to the monitor at this point in time. We are back to this guy. He needs a couple of little things that have been that need to be fixed. One is that uh, Chad doesn't really care that much for the scanner assembly, which is right up here this guy so we're just gonna remove that that's not gonna be a big deal right so we should be able to pull that out relatively easily um, this will be kind of uh, we'll have to go in here and do some more detailed digging on that but that's okay we'll get this guy out right here This is a fast fix compared to what we've got next. Because the next one's going to be difficult. Yeah, I think that might be part of what his problem was. He really didn't want any. This was not a gun ship. And so... It's interesting, a friend of mine and I were having a discussion about um, about the Kitty Wake being a gunship. And I'm not sure where he's headed on it. Because he was saying that it looked like it was a gunship. And I said, well, you know, we're in a Cold War. This mimics, I mean, it has to, the universe sort of has to mimic Star Trek the original series as it was in order for me to pull the Tamerlan stories over. So there's a certain amount of, well, yeah, it is, you know, it's that way. I do. First of all, let's make sure it's not that way. So. Anyway. However, working in the Star Trek universe, I really can try to avoid a little bit more, especially in the movie era. Um, avoid making these.
these things into obvious weapons because I think part of what he's doing in this game is um, paranormal investigation and things like that, which I think would be very fun and an entertaining twist to a Star Trek game. So I'm all about this plan. Um, so we'll just turn this into a small box that's hanging out down here in the, in the case. That's what we'll do here. Just take this guy all the way out. There we go. Now we're on, on like Donkey Kong, as they say. As Dustin is so fond of saying on like Donkey Kong. Okay, so this is the Frankenstein. So we're going to go on ahead and see if I can't put the word Frankenstein in here. This instance I don't really have much of a choice <laughs> because we've been kind of dealing with selected first. Um, we've been dealing with some real problems. So, the actual script that was on the side of the ships, I don't have it. So we're going to have to find ourselves one that looks close. Um, but I actually do not possess the script, a lot of scripts that I have downloaded over time. story here. Where are we getting this line from? level here we go here and again where are we getting this line from I don't want a line and I don't want a line okay good okay so there's no option except to have a line what's going on here 
this is extraordinarily frustrating. I, I mean, I'm only allowed to do this if I... Okay, I'm not online. Why is this making me line? What's going on? This is very... Welcome to the other side here. Although I'm having a real problem because something... Okay, you guys can all see my monitor. Where is it set that I'm online? Why am I getting a line tool function like this? What's the story? This might be a save and reload. That was weird, because I really need, and there we are again, we're at line. What is going on? Yeah, I've definitely got a ghost in the machine. Ironic that it would be this particular, okay, we're going to reboot is what we're going to do. Reboot our program. Do not save. We're going to reload because we have a serious ghost in the machine there. It is not a perfect thing, sadly. My drawing monitor tends to be goofy from time to time. says so we will give it that registry dpi, uh, DPI one and that will be our I have Starfleet extended so I should be able to put that in there I have Starfleet is extended but I can't remember if it's called Starfleet extended or if it's called Federation Extended. I think it's actually called Federation Extended. So we will scroll up until we find Federation Classic, Federation Hall, and Federation. I had Starfleet Extended. Federation Hall will work in a pinch. It's a little harder to do these things here because we've got to skew it to get it to work like this.
first things first is make sure that it is aligned with the, the hull, then we'll resize. So don't worry about the fact that it doesn't look like it's lining up properly. It is. Okay. We're still transforming, so we're going to scale. So, so we're going to shuttle the full registry here on this side. So, now we've tagged everything properly to make a shuttle craft from the Starbase. So we'll call that one good. I'll go ahead and save it. Now, the next one's going to be harder. Oh, you know what I should have done is save it. So save it as a JPEG. Saved. All right. The next thing coming up on this one is the Tempest. The Tempest is what he was calling a, um, a modified Reliant class. Uh, I gotta stop opening things with Photoshop. So we're having a new problem with Photoshop. The newest version of Photoshop has changed the line tool, which is interesting, an interesting choice on their part. The line tool is now a smart object only thing, so uh, you can't just put a line out anymore. You have to create the line and then put a stroke on the line and then set it to rasterize. So it's, it's become a little bit of a pain in the butt now to just quickly roll together a few things. So I'm on load it, load it, load it. There we go. Starting to get there. There we go. All right. So the original design for the Reliant had the warp nacelles up like this. And this was sort of an original layout design for it. Um, we're just going to clean up the existing picture because the existing picture is just fine. It's just super, super low res. So give ourselves a new document. We'll make it 17 by 11 instead of 11 by 17. Right? We'll bring in a new document. I'll take this guy. I'll copy, I am sure. Hey, Donald, good to see you. I am sure that somewhere along the line, uh, somebody that, you know, this drawing has no scale. I'm just saying, no scale at all. All right, we're just gonna use this as a template and just trace it out, because it'll be just fine. 
we already have all the pieces and significant information that we need here. We don't really need to worry about it. Um, so this is going to give us far more than enough to work with. Um, I am going to make this our blue line. So we're going to do a tonal correction and do hue, sat, and luminosity. You raise the luminosity a little bit here and you raise the sat up quite a bit. Um, and then we change its uh, hue. And that did absolutely nothing. <laughs> there is a function in Photoshop called Colorize that allows me to actually make that change, right? But I, I can't make that change here, apparently. So there's that. That's all right. Okay. We're just gonna use this as a blue line, so let's get in here. I think the hardest part that's going to be most difficult to deal with are these unique and interesting struts. I feel like the struts themselves are double lined right here and they don't really need to be. So, um, I'm going to go on ahead and work specifically on this strut right here. Right? Because this looks like the hardest part of this ship to deal with. It's going to be that. It can't be dealt with in uh, a normal way. The truth is, it looks like all of this ship would benefit from uh, going to vector mode. So that's probably what we'll do here. We'll just go ahead and drop up to vector mode. So we'll give ourselves a new vector layer. And this will allow us to do a number of things. One, I can take my G pen now and I can just do this and then say, well, G Willikers, that's probably too complicated. So let's do this and let's just clear it out, right? Let's make it a smooth transition. And now I can look at this and go, okay, let's just get that in there, and that there, and that there, and voila, we have matched the this. So that helps us a lot. The vector mode is going to be very useful for this. And if this was an Avenger class, it'd be a multi-vector mode. I'm just saying. Not an Avenger. I'm thinking uh, Prometheus. This is Prometheus class. It'd be multi-vector mode. I think I'm a very funny. And I make a bunch of Star Trek jokes that probably really aren't that funny. But that's okay. Now... I want to make this a fixed width, so we're going to do that, we're going to do that, and we're going to do that. Right? Put this up here as 10, 10, and 10. So now that we fixed the width, and I, would, I wouldn't normally do a fixed width except that this is a technical drawing, and so a fixed width will help us a lot here. I'm going to look at maybe 7 as our width for this. Seems like a thing. Okay, this strut's been now put in, so let's go on ahead and talk a little bit about our lines here. Because we're going to need a line there, obviously. But I feel like, again, I feel like we're going to be a little hot on that, so let's do 8. The good news is, I'm very familiar with the Reliant as far as the body shape goes, so I know where, or at least I theoretically know where all of these pieces, parts are on this ship. Right, because these are that, this is that back support piece. And this is actually a curve. I'm going to try something. What would happen if I put that in? And then went to my uh, control points here and added a control point in there. Right here. I mean, could I bend it? I can. Except that it's adding the wrong kind of control point. Yeah. What a pinch 
just the vector line, I think. You. Right there. There we go. Still added a square control plane. <laughs> a six man flying the cell. Is that like the hydroplane surfboard I saw last night? I'm just saying that was a little terrifying. I'm, you know, I'm just, you know, just saying. So this didn't turn out like I wanted it to, and I'm kind of bummed about that. That's all right. forward on that. There we go. We have this nice arc coming up here to this section right there. Right, and then this comes up here. Bridge unit up here is pretty straightforward on this. We'll adjust the line width. We'll fix the scale. All of these guys need to be about seven, right? And this all allow us also to see where errors are on our drawing. I'd simplified it all right. We're gonna be simplifying. Okay, now we gotta fix this. Add a control point. There we go. That's funny. So, I'm gonna fix, and there's, this guy needs to be pulled back to there. There we go. There, just like that. <laughs> We're gonna make you do the speed trials. There is glory in speed trials. Okay. You do you. Glory to your house. Okay. Yep, that's fine. We are talking about speed trials on the idea of Front piece is in, all these pieces are in. That's pretty easy. I'm going to go on ahead and remove you. I'm going to try to come back down here and do this with 
this guy. And then I'll just do all the stuff to it. Simplify it. Whoop, whoop, right? Adjust its line width to make it unify or uniform. And then we'll go ahead and fix it because it's got a couple of points that are going to be an issue, but not that big of an issue. Give it a nice gentle curve to bring that in. All right. So we'll do the same thing over here. We know we're going to have to come in like this, right? So now we've laid that in. We'll just go ahead and say adjust the line width. Enough, enough of this will solve the problem of not having a control point in there that I want. Right. Once we've done this, we can go across like this. And then we'll add the lighting structure. It's under here. There's a lighting array that goes under there and we can take the pen and put the, the bottom piece on there which we'll do the same trick on adjust the line width to it work 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 Ooh, look at that we're having issues there we go work <laughs> and then we'll simplify <laughs> And that should give us uh, enough that we can make the dome out of it. There we go. The front of this guy actually sticks out further than the back part of these lights. So the side here and the back here are um, just a little bit further back. So now we're here. You know, it would have been interesting to do sort of the end. Brent, don't worry about it, bro. You're good. We're fine. We're good. We, we, we understand there are other priorities. Tomorrow is Thursday. I have a lot of priorities tomorrow, but not the least of which is Discovery. It has our priorities. It's important. All right, so we've got all of these pieces in. These are all the ones I'm going to be doing at seven point, so it's all good. So let's go on ahead and do this warp nacelle, which is like so. There we go, just like this. I put too many dots in there, I can already see. I love the fin tail on this. Such a classic ship. That's what they called it in Mr. Scott's Guide to the Enterprise. A wonderful book. If ever there was. And all we're doing here is just tracing in the bits and the pieces of the engine. The 
This is called a flux chiller up at the top there. I assume that that means that there are fluxes of which need to be chilled. And that's okay. You can chill your fluxes. Chill your fluxes. That just sounds like something you'd say to a friend. Hey guys, chill your fluxes. Okay? I'm going to start saying that to people. tail end of the spacecraft is here, and it added one extra line that we need. The tail end of the spacecraft goes this way to the structure that is actually part of the um, impulse engine and impulse drive. An array, and here is the Dilithium crystal chambers on the top, or the start of the Yeah, I like so um, what he's basing this entire thing off of is this is the original concept design for um, the Reliant and She originally was designed this way with warp missiles on the top and what happened was she brought it the, the, the modelers not her but the modelers brought it in to show Gene Roddenberry and they because they didn't want the warp missiles to break they put it on the table upside down and so they had it with, because the, the more fragile pieces were these pieces right here, the, the torpedo tubes. So they were sitting the model on its warp missiles and apparently Roddenberry took one look at it and said, that's perfect. And they said, oh, you mean like this? And flipped it upside down. And he said, no, 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 no. The way you had it before. So Reliant got turned upside down. And that's how we got a reliant like this. And so it started though with the uh, nacelles on top. vector lines so that they're all easy to deal with later on. That one got really easy to deal with, didn't it? Alright. Adjust the line width. Same thing. We've been doing all along here. Let's get all these line widths together. touch. Nobody's having an issue out here. Um, any more than usual. There you go. engine. And these guys are not even touching. They're social distancing and that's not cool in this particular instance because I need 
these guys to be playing like a unit here. No social distancing for you guys. Okay, we got this problem here going on. Actually, I'm starting to think that I can do all of this from one line. So let's get rid of that top line up there. fighting so hard on this list of things. Shouldn't be fighting this hard. It's This isn't that difficult. Alright. Bring this around. So... There we go. With that, we've got that piece done. Cleaning up some overlap here. Whisper drives. Yeah, something in the. I think that was part of what was going on in Star Trek Two. did the, all of those pieces with Star Trek 2. They were trying to kind of mimic the feel of Hunt for Red October. Not necessarily Hunt for Red October since Hunt for Red October came out four years later, but they certainly were on the concept and thought process of a submarine battle. So... That's definitely what they were after when they did Star Trek II. And it worked. I mean, the episode is, or the movie itself is, is stunning. This is a complete disaster area, guys. What are we doing here? Oh, boy. I'm not even really sure we need all of these points. I'm not sure we need this guy at all. Right? I'm just looking at this kind of going, eh. Like, I went back and forth here. I really shouldn't be doing that. I, I, I keep doing that with these, and I feel like all I'm really doing is making life complicated for myself. Because we got clearly two lines that are up there. Really need to. So if anything will convince you to be more concise about your artwork, so my other thought was, have you ever thought that maybe the uh, the ships here make not just cavitation noise? or whatever we would call the Star Trek equivalent of cavitation. Um, but maybe you can track them in some other way. My thought would be that, you know, as a story writer, they impact the universe in some way at warp. So though... We certainly could say that they do something, um, some kind of issue with, there is a dot that's right up here on the front of the cell, the cell there, and this guy goes back to here as well, and there is a wall right here. So I, I, you know, the more I think about that, the more I'm kind of, ah, I kind of see that, you know. I did it again. 
so used to doing these things where I just scritch back and forth. Part of what we're trying to kind of do with um, with our practice runs in the morning is to stabilize our arm a little bit. It's not quite as much of a pain to get things through there. Now there are vents up front like this. Will you stop doing that? <laughs> These little intake vents for the Bussard collectors up front. I mean, the plasma trails are definitely an issue, um, but plasma is a state of matter, and so it's kind of, what plasma did it put out? Warp plasma, okay. How do you retrieve warp plasma? You know? These are the questions that I would have. ship is spilling warp plasma all over the place. What are you? I don't even know what you are. So I don't think you belong to this line at all. There we go. There, now they're all connected. All right, let's take a look at where we are so far. So far, this is what we've got. Not a bad start. Um, it is definitely gonna take us a couple of days to get through this project, so we're gonna be working on this for a while on this one. So if you're watching, Chad, we'll be getting there. Um, but we're almost at the mid-show break where we'll want to get out and stretch and all of those things and there are a couple of things like I'm not happy with this it doesn't look right I think that this is more of a plateau on the bottom at which time it plateaus out and there's actually an open spot which has that assembly below it but this is a flat spot with that assembly on it so we're gonna have to go through there and, and fix that um, I don't have a reliant over here but I do have a reliant right up here. So let's take a look up here and see what we've got. Here we go. I've got a Feruda reliant right here. So we're going to take a look at the Feruda reliant and make sure that it's here for our perusingness. Right? So we're looking at its edge here. We're going to take a look at what we've got going on. Because I see from this particular angle, I'm looking at the same critter. And what I'm seeing is a little bit more. I'm going to need to come down in a much more uh, degreed angle for this. Um, so, I mean, we're looking at the top view here. This is probably going to take us about a couple of hours. On each one of these so I'm gonna look at the bottom here and we're looking at this being much more of a uh, first of all I feel like this guy is really ending here which I think pans out more I also feel like looking at the uh, under part of the dish, it does round, but it's not rounded as much, so we'll have to see. It doesn't. It only has the two shuttle bays. It actually has the same shuttle bays as the Reliant does, because the only difference between 
this model and the Reliant is the flipped nacelles, the nacelles going up. So um, we're just going to go in here. We're going to move this stuff around until I'm happy with it. Let's see here. Here, we move this up. This is less about this guy, kind of more like that. All right, so this is coming up at an angle towards the back to light this way. So, the disc, you mean the dish on the front of the, are you mean talk, are we talking about the saucer? Or are we talking about, because there's no, of course there's no sensor dish on the front of these. So. Unlike the more, I felt like the original was very classy. There we go. Yeah, that, that looks more like it. When looking at the cross section of the ship, that's what I've got down there. That looks fine. I think I can flatten out the little dome on the underside there just a hair. But uh, it looks pretty solid to me. Uh, also, moving back in on this. I think I'm going to move this down just a shade. So it's very much like that. I also feel like these guys actually came up the side here to finally end up right up here. So Yeah, and that seems to fit a lot more of what's going on over here on this drawing anyway. So we'll... And we have a converging tangent. And you know how much I hate converging tangents. It's time to take a quick break, says the computer. So... We'll switch over to the ring camera. Oh, and we probably should save this too. Save as. And he calls this the Tempest. Okay, so we'll start working on that. Okay, we're at break. So, everybody, you know the drill. We stand up. Oh, let's see. Stand up, we stretch. Oh, man. Back a little. Oof. Make sure you shake your hands out. Ooh. You want to shake hands? There you go. And then loosen everything up just a little bit. Walk around. Every hour, get up and walk around. Every hour, go and look at nature and make sure that you remember what it's like to be outside. Ooh, the big tree in our yard is all of those beautiful yellow leaves are now brown. <laughs> uh, it's kind of cute. 
humorous and sad at the same time, you know? Okay, so once you've done that and you've walked around a little and we've kind of gotten a little bit of the shook out of our system, we sit back down. Make sure we're comfortable. Oh, I think I, I appreciate that. There's a couple of things I want to fix. Again, I'm looking at my Furuta here and just looking at the basics of the dish, right? So we're looking at the underside. I actually have two Furuta Reliance. And that makes for all kinds of fun stuff with the Reliant attacking the Reliant. <laughs> Which is good because, I mean, if I ever feel the need to, I can always redress one of these as the land tree or anything like that. Okay, well. We've got another hour worth of show to go in, but don't worry, this is not the end of this guy because, as we've already seen, it's taken quite a bit of time just to get to here. So, I wouldn't worry too much about this. We're going to be fine. We'll be, here, we'll be here tomorrow doing this. So, okay, back to work. We'll switch. I do have a lot of small ships. They're all up here. I, I do all of these great things with the small ships. Like I've got, I love these. Like my, my beautiful, these are Space 1999 Eagles. And I even have like the Rescue Eagle right here. And I even have a couple of the Hawks, which are cool. Space 1999 was kind of a weird show, but boy, the eagles are just gorgeous, right? Um, as my kid was discovering earlier, this is my, my Battlestar Galactica collection of small ships. And I have both the Galactica and the Pegasus. And you have to look really closely right there to see which one's which and you can't even see it with this but it does actually have its name on there yes my shirt is cool and we have the base star dun, dun, dun. Bang, bang, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. and then of course my die cast in my die cast I've got uh, a viper and a colonial raider I even have, because it's cool, I even have the newer version of the Viper from the newer stuff. Somewhere along the line, I got a Chrome Viper and Raider. And they're obviously the same mold, because in the Raider, they're the same, but I find it interesting. I don't know. The, the Vipers, though, are different, and because it, this Viper's got landing gear. And this and is slightly larger than my other Viper. I don't get how my Raider is obviously the same mold, but my Viper is different. Always a thing. Of course I built spaceships and Legos. <laughs> I was I was horrible. I still what do you mean did I ever? I still do. <laughs> yep, there I've got a number of things. Um on my little collection sec section up there. I've got things like, um, oh, I like my, I've got the die cast A-Wings. I liked these guys. These were from the, the newer set, and the die cast A-Wings. Ooh, those are cool. I'm an A-Wing fan, so. Got all kinds of stuff. Even have like random stuff that makes you go, why, why do you have that? Here's my Sulaco from Aliens. And in here we even have the drop ship from the aliens, which even has the uh, 
missile pods that come out, which I think is so cool. So my tiny ship collection is very small, but only because they're all tiny ships. So I loved old Battlestar Galactica too. Oh man. I like the new one. I like the old one. You know. Got no issue with either. But yes, I have an insane number of tiny ships. <sighs> My wife has already said that when I die, that'll be the thing. There'll just be all the tiny ships in a box and all of my friends can come pick up a tiny ship as a remembrance of me. I thought that's perfectly acceptable to me. I have no issue with that. That sounds just about right. So we'll simplify this guy up here because this is that front array. And this is actually the next thing I want to take issue with. And I actually love the idea. You know, she said that and, and she was joking and I'm like, no, I'm not joking. I think that's a great idea. Everybody can remember me by my tiny spaceships, which seems perfectly acceptable. Yeah, Stargate's one of the few ones that I didn't... It's not that I hate their ships. The ships were okay. I just... Mm, they were... Because they did kind of look like Galactica ships, I just felt like it wasn't... Wasn't as awesome. But I am definitely a ship guy, as you probably can guess, so... Move this out. I don't think I do ships half as good as some of these other ships here. I do think the kitty wig's kind of cute. Um, it's got cool little wings and things like that, and I think that's kind of cool. So this this piece, not that piece, this piece right here goes way forward like this comes up and around. Kind of like that. And then sort of heads over the top like this. And there's enough of a bend in here that I'm going to put that in like that. There we go. This, I don't know what this is. Probably a sensor array? I'm not 100% sure. Sometimes the model makers just put greebles in because they need greebles. Um, and so they do this greeble thing where they add all these greebles. And then <laughs> I'm like, okay. You added just a bunch of greebles and you don't even know what those things do. Which means the dust trekkies have no clue what those things do. the Betty Greebles, though. The Clark Greebles. Alright. I'm easily entertained. Okay, there we go. Now, bringing in these weird little Greebles on the side. This hull piece here climbs up the side of the saucer to there. So what we're going to do is this guy needs to be kind of bent a little like this. There we go. Yeah, I mean, it's not that I, I certainly am not trying to cast shade on uh, Stargate. I think a lot of the stuff in Stargate was really cool. Um, 
I like the Gua'uld ships and stuff like that. There's a lot of things to really like. I just, I don't know if, I mean, you know, even though I've managed to keep most of my ships up there um, and centrally located, I still kind of feel like A lot of these, you know, I still, I'm still picky about where I, what I get my, what I put in my starship collection. Mostly because of space. I mean, if I had infinite space, I'd have every ship that was ever put out in any series ever, you know. Okay, so this deck is one complete deck here. This part needs to be simplified. Okay, bring that back. And then we, this, this allows us to do some of the pieces that don't need to be done. I mean, I had to trim that down and stuff like that, but this is the B and C deck. So, I could see that. Yeah, it seems like my Babylon 5 collection is pretty... It doesn't have a shadow ship, I don't think. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Let me check. So. I do have Vorlon. Um, I have Membari. So there's some Membari. Uh, a couple of Vorlon ships. A Centauri vessel. And, um, this is a Drazi. And my like all of two non vessels. Non. <laughs> a sh human shuttle. Uh, looks like a pirate raider. This little guy's a pirate raider. A Membari shuttle. Human shuttle, and of course, a Star Fury, because Star Fury's rock. And then Babylon 5 itself. But uh, I think that this Micro Machine set was put out in first or second season, so there's no shadow vessels at all. It's all only um, from the first and second season. So I don't have anything. These guys are becoming exceedingly rare to find now. I only had the one set of the Vorlons. Did I say Vogons? I meant Vorlons. Although Vogons would be funny, except that I feel like the difference between the, the Vorlons and the Vogons is, is in their poetry. I think I'm funny. So, yeah, so that's my collection of Babylon 5. I feel like now it's stuck. I'll have to go back up here and fix it. Because somebody. Oh, yeah, well, you know who's getting stuck? The Centauri ship. Which makes total sense. Oh, come on, that was a great Babylon 5 joke, guys. I, I, I mean, that was an awesome Babylon 5 joke. Okay. Centauri. So, moving along, we've got 
sort of this side rig going on pretty well here. And we'll go back in here and we will just put in the bottom piece of that crystal assembly. We don't need to do that. We just need to come back in here and grab this guy and move him over. We'll pull this back up there. <laughs> Ah, I'm glad somebody appreciates my random Babylon 5 humor. I love Babylon 5. It is really hard to watch it, though, these days. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the animation. And we knew it at the time. I remember my friends and I talking about the fact that it was going to be dated. And it was dated before the... Before the show ended, it was dated. Stra strange space elves. Not just space elves, but strange space elves. You guys are really weird space elves. You know that? That's what you are. Uh, I don't know. I always feel like there was a certain nobility to elves that I did not get. <laughs> Listen, Dottie. Sintari. I'm just giving myself a, uh, a line that already has sort of a wobble to it. And I'll just go through here and I'll simplify it. There we go. And then we'll adjust its line width. It's all uniform. And then we can go through and bend it to our will. forward like so. So I'm looking at these torpedo launchers and I feel like the shape that they've got going on for them here um, is interesting in its own way because now I feel like they go forward back up and then through like this then come out the other side at which time they then trickle down like that and then back and then back and these are interesting these torpedo launchers because of course we didn't see anything like this in the final version, right? This torpedo launcher is a different critter, so it doesn't have the same shape, and so it doesn't have the same effect coming out of it. It's fascinating. I love designs. You mean snobbery like like highborn elves except that they don't have anything to back it up with? Because I, I agree but I feel like that unlike the Centauri highborn elves really did have the, the technological advantage of which to be complete and total variant jerks. <clears throat> and they got away with it because, well, they weren't arrogant jerks. <laughs> and by the way, allow me to compliment you on Ergo the Egos because that's just very eloquent. All right. There we go. Now we're 
we're getting somewhere. That looks pretty clever, actually. Looks pretty sweet. It's coming along nicely. We gotta put in some other minor artifacts. I'm gonna shrink it down to a four because there's a few other things that we've got to do here. For one, we've got to read in the decks and that's going to have to be the undercarriage here. We've got uh, a major line right here a minor line right up here right so this will be a different critter it reads in like this This guy looks like he's bowed a little back here, so we're gonna go in here. And I know that you're just going to add in squares unless I otherwise mention, so we're just gonna bow that just a little bit, right? And pull this back to here. Oof, that's not what I wanted. Wow, we are determined. This model and her Enterprise counterpart, she has a line here delineating decks below and above on this hull. This part, though, comes down further to here. But I'm going to assume that because if you look at the structure right here on the side of, and this is also for you, Chad, if you want to know why I decided to do what I did to your model, um, I'm looking at this structure right here, and it looks like they were building it into this, this lower strut. Well, now it doesn't have a lower strut, so it's building into this upper strut, which would be further back on the ship. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that a non-issue and remove this front structure piece that would come down normally on the dish and just have the dish go all the way back, which is the way I read it here on this. So we'll have to see. There's another run that goes this way. And then we have the lines up here which actually don't sit on this back castle at all. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and continue these lines back to the after section of the ship. And I'm seeing structures and bits here that'll be entertaining to put in at some point. So, there we go with that. Now we need to put in the flux chillers themselves. The flux chillers are fascinating critters. Um, it's actually kind of turning out nice. And here I was worried because I was like, I'm just going to be tracing effectively the existing article, but I'm actually rather enjoying this. There we go. I already voted. That's our friendly neighborhood. Have you voted yet? We would like to encourage you to vote. I already voted. But it's going to take them a while because I voted out of city or out of county. 
so I know it's going to take a little bit to count that vote, and that's alright. In the meantime, they can just call. I am going to be very, very curious how many of us voted. They have been clearly on a very strong pro-voting campaign, which is great. Um, and it is beautiful, unless you are one of those people who has always voted. At which time it's just irritating. <laughs> I agree. So, all right. Now when we remove that, that looks all nice and purdy. Look at that. Isn't that purdy? We'll save. We've got to get the top part of the saucer in. <clears throat> and do a couple of little things back here to the after section of the warp nacelle. Like that. Have I mentioned that I really love Clip Studio Paint's ability to do stuff like that? <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so here we go. This we got a couple of little things to clean up, like through this structure right here. I feel like we got a couple of things kind of going on right out here that really shouldn't be going on. Um, So let's take a look at this. That guy just needs to come up like this. There you go. And this guy looks like he needs to be adjusted in line width. I said he's uniform. We'll simplify him. So allow me to do this and that. And that'll clean that up real nice. Let me get this out of this thing's air. Cleaning up a little bit of this, just just pieces, parts that need to be brought around. Um, I'm looking at the other side. Yeah, uh, so I didn't see on this model, especially the uh, navigation beacons didn't rise up much on the hull as much as they did, I'm actually kind of thinking that I should go back and grab, let's do that real quick. I'll go over here and let's grab the, uh, the refit and take a look at her. Because the refit will tell us a lot more at a larger scale. This will give us more information on uh, what we need to do um, with this particular thing. So let's take a look at the, the refit. And I'm bringing in the refit. I, I see, a, I feel a bump right here for the navigational beacons. They seem to be about as high up as the phaser, the phaser arrays. But I do feel an actual, like, there is something on the, on the, um, the, the front here on, on or the, there's definitely the beacons to the, to the, there, you can feel them. Not only that, here's another thing we need to remember. The RC thruster arrays, um, they'll need to be put on as well. So I'm glad I went over and fetched the refit because now I'm looking at it going, okay, Here's what we need to deal with. Um, so we'll put the refit right here. That's my girl, by the way. I love the refit. If anybody asks, everybody has an Enterprise. Everybody has an Enterprise, all the Trekkies. And the refit is most certainly my Enterprise. 
I still think that's the best design of the lot. It's beautiful. It's elegant the way it is. It's one of those absolutely perfect ships in my book. <laughs> you know, she can't go wrong and stuff like that. The refit's the, the one that I love the most. There we go. So we'll put in... And I know that it's it's always going to be different depending on you know who you are. Many people disagree with me on the refit, and that's okay. There is nothing wrong with that. But the refit will always be the one that I'm so into that I think is so so lovely by herself. The bridge needs to be not the gelatinous cube here. There we go. And this array up here, B and C deck on both the refit and on uh, my small version of A small version of the Reliant over here in my Feruda. Um, and everybody has their ship. And when I say their Enterprise, I'm just really referring to the Kubians who have their Doctor. You know, everybody has their Doctor. Um, and it depends on what era you got into Doctor Who. Um, and all I'm really saying is everybody has their Enterprise. Sometimes that Enterprise is the Defiant. Sometimes that Enterprise is Voyager. But the the long and the short really is that everybody has their Enterprise, whatever that Enterprise may be. Now I'm going to put in the nav, nav lights, the nav beacons, which really will be like right here and right here. Um, and since they're tiny, I'm not going to process there, of it, although I do kind of feel like I should. And we'll simplify them a little bit. Adjust their line width. Whoa! Undo. Adjust their line width. Whoa! whoa. Undo. Zoom, 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 zoom. Adjust their line width. <laughs> Adjust their line width. There we go. Adjust their line width. Just you. Thank you. This. Right. And actually, if we were to adjust their line width, what we want to do is do a four. Because it really is a four. We'll go up here and do the same thing here. I also feel like, now that we've got this navigation beacon in, I feel like it needs to move over. Like, here. It's not lined up. That means you need to move over. Thanks. Okay. Yep, Commander Montgomery Scott is most definitely one of the best engineers. And I and the best book on the refit and the refit's design is Mr. Scott's Guide to the Enterprise. Still one of the best books, right? 
there's a navigation beacon in the back and one on the very, very front. So we'll put those beacons in. And we'll move in over here and zoom in. And there's a beacon to either side of the uh, impulse array in the back. Like this. Stop doing that. <laughs> You're not helping yourself. And we'll simplify the vector line. That makes it flat. That's nice. Adjust the line width. And take our control points and go, hey, you know, don't deflate. Those guys are in the back, right there by the uh, impulse array. But they've been working fine. I'm going to go up here and fix this guy anyway. I like how I trimmed it, but it's still left a... So, that's a good question. There are a few things that, when we talk about the refit versus the, uh, the uh, Reliant, the Miranda class, um, you know, what you're talking about is after deck on this section right here, very hard to see, but after after deck on deck five, and it's back here in section 12. So, and this is a rec deck. When we watched Star Trek, the motion picture, we saw Lieutenant Ilea and Colonel, our Commander Decker, back here in this section, and that was what they were doing. Was, they were right there. Um, when you look at the Miranda, and it's, I mean, obviously that section would be right under here in this back piece that's been affixed onto it. So the question really is, with this affixed back section, do they have a rec deck? I've got shuttle bays back here, but I mean, to be honest, I mean, this is two decks high through the the saucer we've got another extra two decks going above that back here i would assume there'd be a rec deck somewhere back there but i don't see it i feel like the miranda class is a little bit more um, all business that's my thought the observation deck the rec deck those kind of things I like our Miranda classes are much more uh, all business. Okay, let's give ourselves our navigation beacon. Uh, the one on the underside is always off at the same angle as the the facet of the the dish. Yeah, that's a forward observation deck, too. That was what was very interesting about that. Um, you know, and of course, you know, you give... give <laughs> we all do. <laughs> all of us Trekkies do Trekkie things. Um, trying desperately to make that logically make sense. She's got all of her navigation beacons. Thank you, Donald. And she now has those in. 
and I feel kind of like we want to put, well, first of all, we have to talk about, we've got to talk about this, man. We're going to talk about this line, which goes right through the middle of B and C deck, like that. And it's got trim on either side. I'm not sure what that's all about. But I also feel like the two decks down here have indication lines of what those decks are. Like, they come out like this, and they draw back like this, right? And I kind of... We talk a little bit about that set up there and I think it, I may ultimately pull those but at least for right now they'll help me kind of get an idea of where those windows are but I don't mean because they look a little too much like we've done just a little too much here and I kind of feel like if we did that and did that they look a lot better I feel like the ship looks a lot better doing that so maybe I don't want those all right Now we are done with the side view here. I feel like. Now let's talk about any other views we're going to do before we get around to Yeah, so the departure from the model is here, moving that way back. Hmm. Okay. So when we start doing the top-down view of this ship, and we've only got about 15 minutes left in this show and I'm actually kind of thinking of cutting the show here and starting again tomorrow on the uh, top-down view that seems like a much more reasonable uh, process I always wonder up here in the upper left hand corner like, we have like you can see that whoever designed this just a bunch of really wild little sketches that they're doing they're thumbnailing up there but people don't thumbnail on on the actual sketch of the ship so I'm kind of wondering if this was a no 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 this is the way it looks and it looks like this and you kind of got you know this up here and this truck you know when people are like I can't visualize this on the paper you know I don't think they built the model because the more I look at this the more I realize that just looking at this right here is effectively our Miranda, right? I mean, that's what it looks like from the side, upside down, right? I mean, she really does look just like this right here. The more I look at this, the more I think that is totally what may have happened is that this paper... This document right here was the document that was sitting on the table in front of Gene Roddenberry. That he said, yeah, just like that. And then they said, okay. And then he said, but, you know, because the nacelles being under look good offsetting the nacelles being over. They'll look visually different. So. I find it funny that the model that the Reliant was built off of was a was built off of a modified version of an AMT model of this critter of the refit and of all of the models that have passed through years and years and years of Star Trek that model lived the longest you know what I mean and it moved from the movies and was reused in Star Trek 4 as the Saratoga um, 
And apparently the Saratoga lost her roll bar somewhere along the line because she has the roll bar in Star Trek IV, but she's lost it by the Emissary in Deep Space Nine. And so she had a roll bar, but she lost the roll bar somehow. Um, and, you know, we see the we see in, in uh, TNG as... Um, as this this model shows up again and again and again as various ships, the land tree, and as the uh, as a number of other uh, other ships of that line, and I, I think that's kind of cool. Um, it lived its long life, you know what I mean, and it lived a great life. That model, I believe, that model stayed. Active. I mean, obviously, it stayed active through Deep Space Nine. Um, we didn't use that model at all for Voyager or Enterprise, clearly. Um, but we did use the model through the first half of DS9. So that model, like, lived from 1981 when it was being put together all the way through to 1994 or 95. That's a long life. Our little Reliant, which was ultimately just a redress of uh, an existing AMT model of the Enterprise, <laughs> which is cool. Okay, um, science ships. You mean like the Grissom? The Oberth class? Because there is the Oberth class. I'm going to leave the refit over here with us so that we can get back to it tomorrow when we get into this again. So. You can go back up here and live back in your little drawer, and it won't take that much effort for me to pull you back out tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to call it about 10 minutes early over here. We've got the side view of the Tempest done. So we'll save her at this point. Um, and we'll roll this commission out. I'm hoping to finish this commission by tomorrow, but eh, we'll have to see how that works. So, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so, we'll, I'm hoping to roll the Tempest out by tomorrow. That should be pretty cool. Certainly by the end of the week, so I can ship this one out to, uh, to Chad so he can have it for his game. So... Oh, I see what you're talking about. Yes, there were some some of the Mirandas. Yeah, they were thrashed in, in Wolf 359. We had some. Um, there's some... Some of the stuff... We could do an entire show one time about the ships at Wolf 359. Because some of those were wild. Some really wild ships that we never saw again. The Cheyenne class. Uh, the Freedom class. Um, weird and wild and wooly. <laughs> some really great stuff. So, anyway, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Go on ahead and head out. I know you've got some some uh, some taxiing to do, and I am going to head on downstairs and eat some lunch. So I will see you all uh, tomorrow. Until then, keep your eyes on the stars. Bye. -bye.